Well, Wine Abbers, my name is Jesse Meekham from You Need a Budget. Yes, you do. And this is another Whiteboard Wednesday. Today, I want to talk about a distinction between, well, we're going to talk about emergencies and kind of how they scale. Before you started using YNAB, everything, perhaps, felt like an emergency. So your daughter needs $20 to buy new tights for a dance recital? Oh my gosh, where are we going to get the $20? Maybe not quite so extreme, but to a degree, that's what happens. Christmas comes, oh my gosh, how are we going to handle Christmas? Vacation comes, I guess we'll just put it on the card. Everything felt like an emergency. Everything felt stressful. So part of what we're focusing on in following YNAB's rules is just trying to move a lot of your expenses from an emergency crisis status to a handled everything's normal and life goes on status. So I built a quadrant kind of following the seven habits idea. And we have here expenses, unexpected expenses, expected expenses, and then in our columns, whether they're expensive or they're inexpensive. And what happens normally, if you have an expected inexpensive expense, you just use your normal categories. So groceries isn't terribly expensive and I expect to eat or gas isn't terribly expensive and I expect to use gas for the car. We just use our normal categories. Occasionally, there are unexpected, but still inexpensive things that pop up. Maybe the, the tights for the dancer saddle. It's 20 bucks. Okay, we didn't think of that. And will we think of it next time? Probably not. Some stuff is so inexpensive to sit there and try and delineate and, and project out, okay, we're going to need the toothpaste, we're going to need this, shampoo runs out at this rate. It just doesn't matter, okay? So if it's unexpected but inexpensive, I will often just use one category, we call it miscellaneous, and it's just a little bit of a black box for us, and we throw miscellaneous, unexpected, inexpensive items into that. If that miscellaneous catch-all category gets so large, and I know we've talked about this before, if it gets so large that it becomes material to your overall budget, you may want to start examining those component pieces. It may be that there are things in there that you should be planning for and that your priorities inside that catch-all category perhaps aren't quite aligned with what you really value, just if it's a material amount. Now, we get to the important part. Here, you have the expensive category, right? And things like uh, vacation are expensive and you expect that. So you use rule two. Christmas can be expensive if you, if you go that route. It's expected, happens every year, same time. Rule two, uh, car repairs are expensive. You expect them, use a rule two category. Now, what about the oft heard advice that many people give to have a, an emergency fund of three to six months expenses? What you'll find as you use YNAB's four rules, rule two starts to peel away some of those expenses. Where you used to normally put the car insurance premium on, or you know, you'd use your emergency fund to pull that out, suddenly you're not. Suddenly that's just normal everyday stuff. It's like paying the lights, right? So YNABers tend to not need, as a rule, now other variables come in like job stability, how variable your income is, things like that, but YNABers as a whole, in general, can tend to get by with a smaller emergency fund uh, pool because they are expecting many expensive things that other people simply write off and say, oh, that was an emergency. Oh, the roof, that was an emergency. So we still do respect the fact that we can be surprised by things and that they can be expensive. One thing there is medical, right? You, you don't know, you really don't know. And something can hit you, there's no warning sign, it's not like you're saying, oh gosh, this, uh, this body is now 30 years old, so a new roof is needed, right? Things like that can happen, so medical might fall into that. But honestly, it's hard for me to delineate things that are unexpected because, gosh, I can't think of them. So we use the emergency fund principle there, and I just keep my emergency fund right in my checking account with everything else. I get strange looks from the teller at the bank if I ever happen to go into an actual branch because the, the balance for a normal person's checking account is far lower. It's just because rule two funds are in there, the emergency fund's in there, and frankly, I couldn't tell you what the balance is. I'd be off by a lot. I know, however, how much I have to spend in my categories, and that is where the magic happens. 
I'll catch you next time.